So this would be a pretty standard obnoxious problem that you would have in a SOLIDWORKS class where you've got this random pipe that makes no sense in real life and you're trying to figure out what is the equivalent force or moment, force and moment, at say some point down here called point A. So the way that we would do this is we would sum all the forces, which is in this case really straightforward because we can say, well, the sum of the forces is going to be, let's see, we've got a six. So I'm gonna write it like this. We have a six going in the up direction. We have a nine going in the backwards y direction. And we have a 10 going in the backwards z direction, in the down direction. So that means the sum of the forces is simply zero, negative nine, and negative four. Super duper easy. Now we wanna find the equivalent moment, which is a little bit more complicated because we either have to use geometry or cross products, and either way, you know, we have to work, which is never fun whenever we could be, you know, I don't know, doing more homework problems. I got nothing. All right, so we start over here at A. Now, if I actually want to find the moments, so some of the moments are easy, so let's make a list of some of the moments. So this moment here is five, and if you think about which direction it's going, it's a positive, it's going around the z-axis, so it's a positive, in the z-axis of 5 newton meters. Now we also have one down here that is going in the positive y direction around the positive y-axis, so it's 0, 6, 0, so those are taken care of. But unfortunately, all of these stupid forces also cause a moment about point A, so we have to see what is the radius or the position vector from here to here, and then look at this force and do a cross product of the distance or the position vector times the force and that will give us the moment that that force is causing around the A point, okay? So to do that, we need to find position vectors to these various places where these forces are occurring. So I'm gonna call these B, C, and D, okay? So essentially what I need is I need to find position vectors from E to B, from A to C, and then from A to D. So I can take cross products and find moments. Now I can also do it just kind of by hand, but let's just practice doing cross products anyway. So this is actually a little complicated-ish, so I'm gonna be a little careful. So if I start at A right here and I wanna get to B, I need to think about, well, what steps do I have to take? So I say, okay, well, if I'm at A, I have to go down four, or I have to go four down the x-axis, five up, six out, and then four more out. So that's what you're gonna see me do. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go four, on the x-axis toward me. I'm gonna go five up, then I'm gonna go six over and four more over, which gives me four, 10, and five. Excellent, good. Okay, now to get from A to C, and, and ideally what you should do now is pause the video and make sure you can get the rest of the position vectors on your own and maybe even possibly the moments on your own. So I'm gonna go down four, I'm gonna go five up, six down the y, and nine across the x again. So, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and set that up so I can just kind of fill them in as I do it so I don't have to think too hard. So I'm gonna go four down the x-axis, five up, six down the positive y-axis, and then nine more toward myself on the x-axis. So that means my position vector is 13, six, and five. Okay, one more, down, up, and up, So for AD, I'm gonna go four down the x-axis toward me, five, five up the y, and or five up the z, and then four more up the z, which gives me four, zero, and nine. So the sum of the moments, if I wanna look at the moment caused by the, let's look at the, the nine force. So the, the moment, now that I have the R, the moment is gonna be R, A, B, crossed with um, zero, what do we call it, zero, yeah, zero, negative nine, zero. And then I'm gonna add in RAC crossed with this guy, which is zero, um, zero, negative 10. And then I need to add RAD crossed with this guy here, and he's six directly up, okay? So what happens, let me actually move you out of the way, little one. Okay, so I'm just gonna, so these guys stay the same, zero, zero, five. 
zero six zero. Now this guy here, if I do that cross product, I get ninety five zero negative thirty six. If I do this cross product, I get negative sixty one thirty and zero. And if I do this cross product here, I get zero negative twenty four and zero. So if I add all those moments up, I get that the sum of the moments is equal to negative 15, positive 112, and 131. So that's giving me an indication of how this pipe is being twisted. So what's going to happen is in order for that pipe to prevent twisting, it's going to have to react, and it's going to have to react in those magnitudes. So basically what's happening is that this pipe is trying to be twisted actually in the negative direction. It's trying to be twisted in the negative direction about A, or about the x-axis, it's trying to be twisted in the positive direction about the y-axis, and it's trying to be twisted, actually, believe it or not, in the negative direction about the z-axis. So it's, it's being twisted pretty hard, particularly in the y-direction, and that's important to know if we're doing some kind of structure. So the next fun part is going to be to actually sketch this out in SolidWorks and see if we can get the same answers. Now I want to go ahead and see if I can sketch this in SolidWorks. Now in order to do this, we're going to do something kind of cool this time called a 3D sketch. But to do that, we need a special toolbar. So go to View, scroll down to Toolbars, and then eventually you'll find something that's called Weldments. In order to use Weldments, you definitely need a useful tab key. So I'm going to click on 3D sketch within Weldments. Now I'm going to start at the origin, because that's where my picture in the first place starts. I'm going to start at the origin, and notice that I am currently sketching in the XY plane. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, your little 3D thingy, your XYZ, is probably not the same way you're doing it in your textbook, but that's okay. We just need to kind of think about this as a floor and up and that kind of thing. So in my original sketch, it goes along the floor toward me, and in this case, it'd be along the Z axis, so I need to be in the XZ drawing plane. So to do that, I'm going to hit Tab until it says XZ drawing plane. Then I can click on the origin and then come forward a certain distance. Then I want to go up, but if I go up, notice that the floor is still highlighted, which means I'm actually drawing along the floor. I don't want to draw along the floor, so I hit Tab. Now I'm going up again. Yay! So I click up, because I'm in the XY plane, which is fine enough. If you really want to get specific, you, I guess you could say they're in the XZ, YZ plane, but it doesn't matter, because I'm, I'm able to go up, and that's all I care about. Then I want to be able to go out, kind of parallel to my original view, and there we go. So you can see that it does this kind of snap to grid thing. So snap to grid and click. And then I want to come, actually I probably could have left it. I can say I'm gonna come along in the floor, which would be the XZ. So, whoa, I don't want that. What are you doing to me? Here, I'll just escape. I'll just draw a new line. So I'm gonna click here, tab over, there we go. And YZ is just as good because I just mean I just need to be drawing along the, the Z axis. So remember the Z axis in this case of SolidWorks is coming out toward me and click there. All right, then I want to add another line that goes along the X axis. So I can't do that if it says YZ. There we go, along the X axis because it says ZX. All right, and then I need to draw the little segment that goes up over here. So I'll click here and go up, which I can't do unless I have the F, which is a Y. So X, Y, now I'm drawing up, and I'm in good shape. So that should look exactly, basically exactly, like the sketch that we had in our problem. Now it's not defined at all, so I do need to fix that. This down here along the bottom is four. This here section was five. Woo! Hit F to recenter your screen. This section here was four. This section here was six. Oh, that didn't like that. I'm gonna control Z. So because that yelled at me when I did that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that dimension. And then I'm gonna do this one on the outside first. So this one was four. So that's nice. So then whenever I come over here and I hit six, it doesn't yell at me. I don't like being yelled at by computers. And then here, this section here is nine. Good? Excellent. Now, in my particular problem, you'll see that everything is still blue, which means that it's not fully defined, which is really weird, because I feel like it should be. So as I click around, like if I click this point, you see that I can actually make it move, which means that this angle down here is not defined. 
this is defined because everything else stays like it should, but this guy here is not happy. Now there's a couple of ways I can fix this. Probably, see right here how it's got a nice little stupid angle. I can try throwing a dimension. It may or may not work. If it doesn't work, the easiest thing is just for me to stop and redraw it. And I don't think this is going to work because even though it's 90 degrees, it's going to say, well, that's 90 with respect to kind of what plane. So maybe I could say, now this is probably because at some point I didn't snap to the grid like I should have. But as you can see, I'm still, it's still moving and that's definitely not what I want. So rather than go and try to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and delete the sketch and try again. And now that's done. So it was really just a case or just easier to go ahead and just redraw it. And a lot of times that happens in SolidWorks is it's just easier to go ahead and redo it than to actually try to fix anything. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to convert this into a pipe, which is kind of fun. And you still need the weld mitts toolbar. So you want to click on weld mitt. So to create a weld mitt here, just going to create a weld mitt feature. It's not going to feel like anything happened, but that's okay. Now I actually want to create a structural member out of this. I'm going to go structural member, and then I'm going to start clicking these little pieces and they're going to add to and what's going to happen is I'm going to try to click this one. It's going to yell at me or not let me do it. And I get all discouraged until I realize there's this button over here called new group. So whenever I go to new group, I click up here and then I try to click up here and it won't let me. So I just say new group and go. Now I don't really care what kind of pipe I'm using. I just want it to be some kind of a pipe again, because I'm not really looking at this from that kind of a structural standpoint. I'm just looking at forces and moments. So I'm happy with this and I click OK. Now it doesn't look like anything's happened and I might or might not have spent the last 20 minutes cussing at my computer and figuring out why it didn't work until I had the sense to zoom in and go, oh yeah, look, there actually is a pipe there and you can see how it's connected. So it actually did do something even though you can't tell. I don't need weldments anymore, but I will go ahead and save to make sure that I'm in good shape. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start the study. So I go to simulation, study, and go. Now I want to go ahead and I want to fix this end. So remember I, I hit the scroll wheel and then I can rotate my mouse around to get to the back of this side. So I want to create a fixture here. So right click fix geometry. So this guy here is going to be fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click that guy. Now see all of a sudden it's identified these joints, which basically is saying, well, this is kind of the center of where the action is happening. So joints, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, hit F to scroll out again. Now I can go ahead and I can add, this is really not pretty, so I'm going to tell it to do it like that. And then I can adjust it a little bit. Now up at the top, I had an external force, so I can right click force. And as I kind of look into here, if I scroll in, you can see what's going on. All right, I can actually change this to joints. So out of this joint here, I can say along, let's see, this axis would be the center axis. So along that center axis, I want to have a force of six newtons. Now you see it's going the wrong direction, so I can reverse that, no problem. The only problem with reversing the direction is, of course, it hides it just because you can't see it. It's, it's inside there, you just so you just can't see it. And I also want to create a moment. Now the moments look kind of like thumbtacks, so this is a moment pointing in. We actually want our moment pointing, see it's pointing ah, in. Um, we actually want our moment pointing out because it's a positive moment. So we're going to reverse the direction and we want that moment to be five. And believe it or not, it's there. It's just really, really hard to see. If I want to see it, I can come over here and I can hide my structural number. And now if I look, I can see the force and the moment both that are there. But I, let me go ahead and show that again. And again, hit F. Now over here on this end, I had some more forces. I had a, um, so along this joint here, ah, so I'm gonna go ahead and click joint. So I have this joint here and along this axis, I have a force of nine forcing in, which is nice because that's actually the direction that it naturally wants to go. But then I have an outward facing moment. So again, the thumbtack is in the wrong direction. So reverse the direction of that, and this is going to be six newton meters. Good to go. Zoom out one more time. Now I want to apply um, a force going down from here, so that's going to take a little bit of extra work, maybe. So external load, force. 
I'm going to stick it on this joint. So I have to select joint, so it's on this guy. Now for this direction, I actually want to pick a different direction. So there we go, I click the face, and that will allow me to control the direction a little bit better. So I want to be along the plane. There we go. Reverse direction. So now you can see, whoa! <laughs> now you can see that force is going the right direction, and I want it to be 10. And that should be sufficient to go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and get it back to a decent looking, there we go. And again, now you can kind of see the, if you, if you scroll over, you can see the, the forces and the, the moments that have been applied. And then I, of course, I'm stuck fixed on that end, which is what I want to be. I can go ahead and apply my favorite material to all bodies, plain carbon steel, because I desperately don't care. Save it for good luck and then run the study. And there we go. I can go through here. And really, when I, since I'm looking at really finding an equivalent force, and um, so it's funny because it's disconnected. You don't want to see the deformed result because that just looks ridiculous. Um, remember that since I'm looking at a, um, whatever you call it, I'm looking at a, a moment reaction, really, which we haven't officially discussed at this point. But basically what we're doing is trying to find what is the equivalent moment of all of these things. What I can do is I can measure it from this side. It's just going to be backwards though, so everything's going to be kind of negative to what it should be, and that's because it's basically saying what force would I need at that point to even out all the other forces, or what moment would I need at that point to even out all the other moments. So if I go to list result and force, notice that I don't actually have the option for a, react, for a free body force like I have in the past, and that's because we're using joints on this thing, but it's still really not a big deal. I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to click on this joint and ask it to update, and will automatically give me those numbers which is precisely what I got last time, which is super exciting. Now, again, don't be worried by the fact that these numbers appear to be off by a negative, because like we said, they are actually kind of what we call reaction forces or what would you have to do to counteract it. Also, don't be alarmed by the fact that they're not technically in the right position. So for example, we had that F in the Y direction was negative nine, and here it's showing up as being in the X direction, and that's because again, whenever I go like this, and you see what this looks like, what they're calling x is actually what we called y. And what, so what they're calling x, we called y, so since we saw nine in the y, we would expect for SOLIDWORKS to say that nine is in the x. Also, their y is our z, so we had four for z, and they also have four for what they're calling y. This number is basically zero, so we don't worry about it. The same thing with the moment. If you go and you're careful and you track, you'll see that you actually have the same numbers they're just in a slightly different order, and they are the opposite, because again, these are what we call reaction forces, which is what is the force that we would need to counteract the net forces of everything else going on in the structure.